Okay, hey there everybody. So in the short video that follows, I'm going to be uh, showing you how to do some, some basic interpretation of your regression output. Uh, I'm going to be using eViews 11, but, but you know what I'm going to talk about here is really applicable to any regression output that you might, might uh, be looking at. <laughs> uh, but before I get into that, a few things, right? So um, if, if you don't know what a coefficient is, right, then, then you, you want to look you need to do some background before you watch this, right? Or it's not going to make sense, right? Um, and then also you need to know what the basic things like the t-statistics are um, or f-statistics. And uh, there's a companion video to this, right? That if you're in this class, right, you have them situated right next to each other in your, your little folder. Um, if you're just somebody watching this randomly, you know, take a look at the playlist for this course uh, because uh, this is just going to be sort of the you know, reading reading what's on the sheet, right? You need you need to know the theory behind this too, as well. Okay, so thanks everybody. That's long enough. Bye. Hey there, everybody. So we're just going to make a short video here, and I'm going to show you how to uh, interpret uh, the the basics of the regression output. Uh, Let's uh, hop into that. This is just a, a video I recorded. Uh, uh, using a data set I have at my office, right? And so I recorded this video at my office where I have the software to do this, eViews, uh, but I don't have the software to do this, right? So you're going to be watching me commenting on this sort of pre-recorded video. <clears throat> all right, it's going to be fun. <laughs> okay, so first of all, what am I going to do? I'm going to run uh, regression here. So I'm going to go to quick. I'm going to go to estimate equation. Okay, I'm going to move myself here a little bit. Get me out of the way. Okay. <clears throat> And I'm just going to grab, first of all, from a dependent variable, which in this case is a corrected price. This is a bunch of housing sales data. Uh, I'm going to introduce a constant, and I'm going to grab just a handful of variables. Now, in this exercise, I'm not trying to uh, get it right. I'm not trying to predict or forecast these home prices. In any way, I'm just trying to show you sort of how this works. So you can see me grabbing variables here, living area of the house, lot size, bedrooms, bathrooms, um, and then when we, you know, when we have a, a pretty good list, I'm just going to, so I'm going to add garage here too, whether the house has a garage. And then we'll hit OK and run this regression. Okay, so over there you see that, right? And so we have a bunch of sort of output. Well, what does this mean? Okay, first off, before I get into this any further, right, this is coefficients. This is for OLS regression, and in this case, the functional form is completely linear, right? So the interpretation of the coefficients is very straightforward in this case. Um, the first column there is coefficient, right? And that, that column in this case of simple OLS linear regression, right? Uh, linear functional form, right? We have that coefficient tells us about how changes in the independent variable are affecting the dependent variable. So for example, I'm going to pause this here before it gets too far ahead of me. <clears throat> in the case of that first column, we see lot size. So what this is indicating in this functional, again, this is linear, right? This is all linear relationships. If we, if we alter that, uh, we'll talk about that in a future video. Um, but right now, this is all sort of linear. And so that says in this specific application that every additional square foot of lot size is adding about $2.44. Every square foot of living area is adding about $44.46. Okay, so on and so forth. Now, all those coefficients are positive. We have, if we had something that actually caused homes to lose value, right, we would see a negative sign in front of there. Okay, the second column then, this one here is our standard error, right? So if we think about a, you know, constructing a normal distribution around those coefficients, the standard error then is, you know, one side, two side, double at gives us our standard error. Third column then is the T statistic, right? So this tells us about the significance of those coefficients, really like the quality of the estimated relationship between that independent variable and the dependent variable. So here are T statistics associated with lot size, 5.11, right? It's telling us that, that really at any, any uh, uh, confidence level, that is significant, right? Our P statistic here at the end, probability is not significant, zero, right? Okay, similarly, living area, right, our t-statistic, nearly eight, extremely strong, um, so on and so forth, right? So the only one here, we have bathrooms, uh, you know, probability that if we, if, we, if we drop down to very low 
or if, excuse me, if we move up to very high confidence levels, that's going to lose significance. Okay. Now, <laughs> you say like, well, how could bathrooms lose significance in a home price? Well, clearly this is a very good, very good uh, model, right? Okay. All right. <clears throat> let's keep. Let's roll our film again. Oh, sorry. Before we get to, here's our R squared. So 0.4 again with with housing data. This is this is not going to cut it. Um, we would need to do better than this. Adjusted R squared here um, suggests that our variables are pretty good, though, of the ones we have. The whole model, not very good, but kind of on the right track. Okay, standard error regression. Okay, so this is our um, ex explained component of our variation. The next is the sum of the squared residuals. I'm going to pause this again. So that's our unexplained component of this, so our uh, ESS and RSS uh, correspondingly. Uh, and then finally there at the bottom is our F statistic and then the probability associated with the F statistic that is you know the probability that we should you know reject this entire model out of hand which is zero. Uh, so it's telling us you know that we're you know, we're sort of on the right track here but this is really not not a very good model. Okay, and so that's what all of these means. We have sample size, observations, so on and so forth, time in which we run it. Uh, that's what this regression output is telling us. All right, see you again next time. Bye.